Hello neighbor, I'm Robert Burns and I want to visit with you today about recent developments with regard to Governor John Bell Edwards's take on the Alton Sterling uh, tragic shooting uh, the, uh, and Governor John Bell Edwards said that he in looking at the video uh, that was provided of the episode he said that his uh, adjective to describe his thoughts of the video were quote disturbing unquote and I think anybody who looks at that objectively would have to say that they would concur uh, that that the video is indeed disturbing uh, I would commend Governor Edwards on his characterization of that video as being disturbing but I would then pose the question Governor Edwards what would be your take on the following video clip. Yeah, on number nine. All attending the meeting are subject to be searched on, on what grounds? If you're in here. On, on what grounds? Homeland Security Act. On what grounds? Homeland Security Act. You are subject to search. But you got to have grounds for to subject you're, to search. One second, Just because I walk in this building doesn't mean that I'm in violation of anything. Are you carrying without, a weapon? Without probable cause. Are you carrying a weapon? Why are you, are you not? carrying a weapon right well, now? What I, well, I'm not going to answer that question. The point I'm making is this. I'm not going to answer that question. The point is this. No, I need to know if you're no. carrying a weapon. No, you, you don't need to know anything. You just asked me on what grounds are you going to search me? I walk in here like everybody else. So what grounds are you going to search me? If you're going to ask me, you need to ask every other board member here, are they carrying weapons? Not specifically me. You're just the one bringing it up. But I, I, because I have a problem with one on the grounds of being searched, especially without a proper cause in vain. All right, so you have seen that disturbing, and I'm going to use that word, video, four times singled out, are you carrying a weapon? Nobody else in the room has asked that question, and he makes note of that fact. Now, I'm going to give you background as to what led up to that. These videos you're going to see and the information that is portrayed thereafter, uh, they're embarrassing for me as I was a member of that auction profession, uh, but they are what they are. Uh, let's go back only two months previous to that and let's watch Sandy Edmonds, the executive director, single out Reverend Phillips and state that he is the reason she has hired security. This is from the July 18th, 2011 LALB meeting. Let's break for that clip. The interior design board at this point in time does not own its own conference table, chairs, or anything. Uh, now that um, I've got Mr. Phillips, Mr. Burns, and his video camera, and because of them attending the interior design board meetings, I now have uh, Deputy Landry there also. All right, you've seen the clip, and I know what everybody out there is saying. Well, she also identified you as being a reason she hired security. And, and Reverend Phillips said, Robert, you were nothing but a decoy. Make no mistake, it's me she's worried about. And I'm here to tell you, he's right, okay? And I know what you're going to say. Well, how can you prove he's right? And I, I've told you before, I don't make statements I can't back up. Going to give you a direct link to an email that Miss Edmonds sent to me on June the 4th of 2010. Now you're uh, and I'm trying to set up a meeting in the office. Now this is a one person office. It's nobody but Sandy Edmonds, okay? Uh, and Miss Edmonds took a job where she could be out on the beach and everything and and uh, so I'm having to go through quite a little email string to uh, arrange the meeting but I was as accommodative as I could. Now bear in mind at that time both Reverend Phillips and myself are board members. Okay, we are members of the Auctioneers Licensing Board. Uh, but I, the reason I want you to see that email, and you need to go to the very bottom, and this is what she says. Now this email was sent by Sandy Edmonds to me on Monday, May the 31st of 2010 at 9.52 p.m. She's, now bear in mind she is the only person in this office. All right, it is a one-person office. Sent Monday, May the 31st at 2010 at 9.52 p.m. And she says, Robert, what day would you like to come to the office? I can be at the office any day next week. The kids have vacation Bible school from 9 to 12. 
so I can easily get you set up any morning at 9.30 or later. I will have to leave by 11.40 to pick them up, but can easily return once I pick them up. Or, if afternoon is better, I can do any day after 1 p.m. So she clearly has no concerns when it's just me coming into the office. She's going to be there alone, but there's no qualms about she's bending over backwards to accommodate me coming into the office, all right? That kind of shoots down the theory that it was her fear of me that prompted her to hire security. Of course, it just so happens that I am Caucasian. Just make that point very obvious. Whereas my good friend, longtime friend, Freddie Phillips, is black. And so she and I went through the exchange and ultimately, I mean, she had said Monday and we went to Wednesday. We settled in on Tuesday, June the 8th. Tuesday, June the 8th of 2010. And she and we at 9:30. 9:30 was the time I was to come in, and I was running a few minutes late. And I'm going to give you a link to my cell phone bill that very day. All right, you're going to get a link to my cell phone bill, and you will see entry number 109 on Tuesday, June the 8th, where I called Freddie. That's his number I have highlighted. We were to set up a lunch later that day. Reverend Phillips and I, we were to have lunch. I called him at 9.24 a.m. to firm up lunch. And he just asked me, well, what was I doing that morning? And I didn't think anything of it. I told him I'm going over to the auctioneer's licensing board to look at records. His reaction was he thought it was a joke. He said, there ain't no way you're going over to that board to look at records. And I repeated myself. I said, I am, Freddie. I'm, I'm, I'm running late. I said, I'm going to be about five, ten minutes late. I'm supposed to be there at 9.30. I lived at that time only about ten minutes from the office at my apartment complex. And I told him, even as it was, I was going to be five to ten minutes late. And he said, Robert, there is no way you were going over to that office to look at records. And I said, well, yes, I am, Freddie. Why is that so shocking to you? And I will never forget these words the rest of my life. He said, Robert... Sandy told me the office is closed. I pause to let that sink in. Because I will never forget the utterance he made to me. Sandy told me the office is closed. So I said, well, Freddie, I'm going to be there. If you'd like to come in, I don't see why you shouldn't just drop by. I'll open the door for you. In the old days, any auctioneer could come in and visit with Miss Sherry Wilkes any time. But that was before the days that we hired Miss Prima Donna, who said she was going to be in the office on a regular basis, and it turned out she was hardly ever in the office. That's why you had to go through this lengthy process to schedule one simple office visit. But I told him, drop by. I will open the door for you. And if you'll look at entry number 113 on my phone bill, he did call me at 1129. And he asked, do you think you'll still be there a while longer? And I said, yes. And you will see that on at 1157, on entry number 115, he called and I got him right on to, I said, I'm here, and I opened the door. The office was toward the rear of the building. He intentionally made it a point to see Miss Edmonds, and he said, well, Sandy, imagine finding you here, given that the office was closed. Okay? So, with that little development, this was on June the 8th, some 47 days later, Anna Dow, the board's attorney, drafted an email. I'm going to give you a link for that email. On July the 25th of 2010, she drafted the email that I'm going to give you the link for. I want to take this time to read 
Miss Dow's letter. I've given you the link for it, but I want to read it. It's to the former chairman of the LALB, Ken Comer, and as I said, it's dated July 25th, 2010, and the, it says it's regarding auction board meetings and a request for security. Now bear in mind, this is 47 days after Miss Edmonds had graciously invited me in, but told Reverend Phillips the office was closed. Dear Ken, as we discussed yesterday, events have occurred over the last few years which has caused to be concerned for the safety of members of the board, the executive assistant, and myself at board meetings in the future. I believe there is a serious danger of harm to women, especially. Wow. wonder if that would be why the office was closed. Black man wanted to come in, take a look at records. Office is closed. You've already seen the clip of Miss Dow asking him four times, are you carrying a weapon? Let's continue on. I have discussed this with Vice Chairman Tessa Steinkamp and Executive Assistant Sandy Edmonds, and I believe that I can represent that they both agree with me, as I believe others do also. Therefore, I would advise you that the three of us do not intend to attend any future meetings of the board unless security is provided at those meetings. And bear in mind, security is also transpiring at the Interior Design Board and they ain't a soul there in the audience but myself and Reverend Phillips. And I read you the email about Miss Edmonds welcoming me in. Last paragraph, I apologize for any inconvenience that this may cause you and other members of the board are the auctioneers who may attend the meeting. However, I believe that our safety is more important than our attendance at board meetings. As I advised you earlier, should the board decide not to provide security, I will be available by telephone should any legal question arise. I will be glad to discuss this with you at your convenience. And ever since then, there's always been a deputy present. But I don't want it to just stop there. Notice on that video from Miss Edmonds, she said she'd hired security for the interior design board. Now she has it also for the LALB. But I want to emphasize to you that with the interior design board, there's nobody that shows up for those meetings except Reverend Phillips and myself. So Reverend Phillips wanted to address this issue with the young ladies at the Interior Design Board. And he did so on August the 11th of 2011. Let me give you that little video clip. I had to report. <coughs> Sam, how are you doing? Fine, how are you? I'd like to thank you all for allowing us to attend the meeting. Let's have a question uh, on the, the chairman's report uh, at our meeting, uh, uh, LALB meeting. Uh, we were informed that we were a threat or somewhat of security being here. Um, no, there's no threat. I mean, we really, that's not really on the agenda as far as you know, discussion of that. If you guys want to talk about that after the meeting, um, you know, T.L. and I would be happy to stay, but, you know, this is not part of the agenda. So, okay. uh, could we possibly in one meeting add, add this uh, item to the agenda for the board? I think you can send it in. That's perfectly, you know. Okay. I just want to make sure I, yeah. yeah. That's I thank you very much. Well, you're welcome. And, uh... he, he raised the issue very meekly, very politely, and he asked, is there a threat? It's Deborah Steinmetz, the chairman of that board, said, no, there's no threat. Well, I don't know who or why a person would hire security when they don't perceive a threat. All right. Well, you also heard Ms. Steinmetz say you can make a request to have the agenda, have it placed on the agenda to discuss this. So guess what? We did. Going to give you a link for that agenda request of August 15, 2011. We made the request. How did Ms. Steinmetz respond? Going to give you that link. October 6, 2011. She sent out a response saying 
she did not feel it was germane to the interior design profession so the item would not be placed on the agenda. Wow. All right, as if what I have shown you already is not bad enough, let's take a look at a few more videos that I would hope that Governor John Bell Honor Code Edwards would seem as disturbing. Let's take a look at a video from the November, actually it's an audio, because we happen to have missed that meeting, and that's an important point. Reverend Phillips missed one meeting for the first time in four years, November the 5th, 2012, and let's listen to the way two board members answered the roll call. Let's break away for that little clip. Morning, I'm gonna call the meeting. Order, Cindy, will you call the roll, please? Yes, Ms. Steinkamp. Here. Mr. Sims. I was here. Mr. Little. Mr. McMillan. Here. Ms. Jacobs. Here. Mr. Brister. Here. Mr. Bordelon. I was here too. <laughs> yeah. You have a quorum. Now, as a result of that particular roll call, there were several articles written in the Advocate, uh, and their Governor General said, "All right, enough is enough. I got to have an Inspector General's report." And we'll give you a link both to the Advocate articles as well as to the Inspector General's report. Uh, <laughs> The Inspector General is accepted as the excuse for Mr. Sims, James Sims, the one who began the roll call with eyes here. Uh, the excuse was accepted for his diabetes and dentures flaring up. <clears throat> diabetes and dentures, all right. Well, all I can tell you is Governor John Bell Honor Code Edwards just reappointed James Sims for another four year term. Check, check base on that character, Governor Honor Code. But let us not stop there. Let's continue on with another episode of Mr. James Eyes Here Sims. Let's take a look from the July 18th, 2011 LALB meeting. Now, Reverend Phillips was challenging an invoice in which Ms. Dow billed the LALB for attendance at an ELOA. Uh, that's National Auctioneers Association Conference. She did not get any prior approval from the board uh, to go to the you know, NAA and bill the board for it. And Reverend Phillips took offense to this because they required a vote of him, and the vote was five to two against. The only, the only uh, ever in the history of the LALB, the only person ever be voted down for going. Uh, so he took a little bit of umption uh, to the to the umbrage to the fact that. Uh, she could just go up there and readily bill the board. Uh, and let's take a look at James Sims's reaction uh, to him questioning these invoices. Let's break away for that clip. That Ms. Dow had invoiced the board for attending the old conference. It was never approved by the board, nor was it ever mentioned uh, that Ms. Dow would bill the board. I'm going to tell everybody something. I come down here to serve on this board and represent the auctioneers in the state of Louisiana to the best of my ability is what I told Governor General. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to make something clear right now. Burns, you get this on tape. Mm -hmm. I do not participate in after-the-fact witch hunts, nor am I going to tolerate it on this board. This is all witch hunt. All it is is, is a really and truly, if you want to know my opinion of it, it's flat out harassment to this board. And I highly, and I highly resent it. Oh, you you making that directly toward me? I'm not making. I'm saying I'm making it to the board. I did not call your name. I did not say Fred. Well, I'm calling asked. the board. But I asked take the it for what it's worth. I asked the I question. Address the board. I asked the question. I address the board. That's all I answer you're getting. Let me. Let me. All right. Wow. I'm gonna bite Reverend Phillips's head off about this and he's doing witch hunts. Oh, God forbid that he look after auction license funds. So he's engaging in a witch hunt. All right, let's take a look at the August, I'm sorry, the March 5th, 2013. Let's take a little clip there. Once again, you'll see James, eyes here, Sims, bite Reverend Phillips' head off for the mere fact he can't hear what Mr. Sims is saying. Let's break away for that clip. Really stop with the camera well, I can't hear, so I'm trying to get where I can hear. Madam well, Chairman, did I hear Mr. Sims state that the motor vehicles are issuing auction licenses? Is that what he just said? That's what I said, Freddie. They are issuing auction licenses for auction 
auto options. Beyond just the beyond just beyond the dealer. This board. Okay. Okay. I just want to make sure I heard that correctly. <laughs> Alrighty, now let's take a little bit of step back in time. Let's go back to August the 2nd of 2010. This is Tessa Steinkamp, the woman who would uh, get a little confused about her address and where she lives and voter registration is going to differ from her residency, which means she had no business being on the board during any of this time frame. But let's, let's just see. Reverend Phillips had requested to go to the NAA convention. National Auctioneers Association, and in the history of the LALB, no one has ever been voted down saying they could not go. I voted in favor of him to go. I was the only one besides himself. It was outvoted five to two. Five against two far. Let's hear Miss Steinkamp explain uh, why she doesn't want him to go to the convention. This is a brief clip. Let's break away. Honey, I'm going to be quite honest with you. I voted no not to send you. I wouldn't want you to represent this board. All righty. You just heard it. She said, I wouldn't want you to represent this board. You can't get any more succinct than that. All right, let's break away for one more clip, and that would be at the same meeting, August the 2nd, 2010. Former longtime Chairman Buster Gay, he's one of the ones that was doing the travel voucher fraud, folks. And he knew Reverend Phillips knew about it. Let's, let's hear what Buster Gay's got to say about Reverend Phillips going to the NAA convention. Let's break away for that clip. I think a lot of it's got to do with the board thinking somebody would not be a liability at the convention also. We censored a board member once before for making derogatory remarks at a convention. And... Uh, I won't go into detail what it was, but after that, and we have been kind of careful about who we send to the convention. So just you know, if you don't go to that convention, that you might not uh, uh, do something that would be an embarrassment to the state. You heard right, folks. He said you'd be an embarrassment to us. All right, Governor Edwards, with all I've presented to you, and I agree with your characterization, with regard to the Alton Sterling video being disturbing. My only question to you now is why you not view all of these incidents as disturbing. And it is for that reason that I'm going to let you know right now that I view the following video clip of you to be disturbing. I'm Reverend Freddie Phillips. I'm the one that you said it brought on. I have a problem with that. I feel like this personally is what I uncover about things that went on on the board. If the governor doesn't want integrity in his office and in, on his commissions, as it relates to the things that are to my industry, the auctioneer's industry, I uncovered the payroll fraud, the eyes here stuff, all the things that went on that was an embarrassment to not only our state, but my profession. And I have to send Now, I'm just going to wrap this video up by saying that myself, Reverend Phillips, and uh, an advocate reporter had lunch a couple of years ago or so, give or take, time goes by. And the reporter asked, why in the world? He looked Freddie straight in the eyes and he said, why would you want to be associated with these people and be on that board? And it was a darn good question. When he served under Governor Bobby Jindal, all of these things took place. And when he asked for my opinion, when he was thinking about applying to serve under Governor Edwards, I said, Freddie, I think that's a great idea. And this is what I told him. I said, whereas Bobby Jindal allowed all this to take place, and he wasn't worried about it because Bobby Jindal had, what, 4% if he's lucky of the black vote? I said, there's no way that John Bell Edwards is going to tolerate this because he's got 97% black support. There's no way this man's going to stand for this. So he applied. What neither Reverend Phillips nor I could ever envision is that John Bell Edwards would cave to the very elements you've seen depicted in these videos and whop him off at the knees before he could ever go to his first meeting. And Governor Edwards, that is why I will look you straight in the face 
I'm doing it on a camera now, but I will look you straight in the face and I will say, truthfully, I am embarrassed to have you as the governor of the state of Louisiana. Thank you so much. We look forward to bringing you another upcoming video in the not too distant future. Thank you once again.